Hello, everyone, and happy Friday. Kelly Walters here. So welcome to the Heat Press for Prod, excuse me, Heat, Heat Press for Profit podcast. We are broadcasting live here on Facebook, YouTube, and LinkedIn, and more. And if you are watching with us live, make sure you shout out who you are and where you're watching from. You know we love to see where you guys are tuning in. And if you are listening anywhere, you listen to podcasts, that's great. Just make sure you subscribe to the show where we launch a new episode every week. Now, I also encourage you guys to head over to Facebook and join our Heat Press for Profit community where you can interact with our guests and lots of your peers who also love learning and own a heat printing business. Now, our podcast is designed to have conversations with apparel decorators just like you and industry experts that can have an impact on your business. I'm excited to say today we have Gary and Janae, and he is the owner and host educator of the t-shirt help desk and we are going to chat about youtube and i'm really really excited about this conversation because you know uh, as apparel decorators you don't just have to be an apparel decorator there's so much more to that that you can be and gary has actually had his channel for about a decade and consistently been pushing forward to it uh, since 2014. And you guys, he has 255,000 followers. This man is not only a skilled graphic artist, but he understands our world of heat decorating and multiple other facets um, when it comes to transfer. So Gary, thank you so much for taking time out of your traveling day as he's at the <laughs> airport, you guys. So um I feel pretty special that he took he took this moment to like have this conversation with us. Well, thank you so much for having me and um, and to, to everybody listening. And, you know, this is what technology is for. This is what we do. And That's my flight right. is not for another couple hours. So I'm good. We're good. <laughs> Well, Gary, I know I talked just a little bit. You've you had um, your channel on YouTube for you know almost a decade, like you said, and then you've really been consistent with it for about you know since 2014. But why don't you give everybody just a little bit of your background? Um, because I know your knowledge is extensive. It's not just mm -hmm. running a channel or having a shop, but just tell everybody a little bit who Gary is. Okay. Well, I. Started actually doing T-shirts in high school uh, in 1989, um, and then I, you know, I was I've always been a, a an artist, so I went to school for that, and I I got out and I I took a graphic design, and I started working for a few companies, and that's how it started. So I did that for worked in the uh, New York City in the apparel industry for a better part of about 18, 18 20 years. And uh, that was around about the time where uh, YouTube was starting to uh, bubble, I guess you can say. And yeah. I was actually, I was actually on YouTube kind of like blogging, you know, just okay. like, you know, and talking, you know, and um, I was like, and that's when I was actually on YouTube before they had monetization. So a lot of us, we just did it for fun. Okay. And uh, then monetization started and I was like, wait a minute, you can make money doing this thing, you know? And uh, a friend of mine years before that said, you know, you're really good at that, like graphic stuff. You should teach that. And I was like, nobody wants to see that stuff. <laughs> and um I, I did it just on a whim one day and totally forgot about it. And I came back and it had like 50,000, 100,000 views. And I was like, okay, there might be, you know, there might be something to this. So I did it and I was working. And, and um, all of a sudden one day, this was like around about 2000, um, maybe 2013, 14, I got laid off. And um, I realized that, you know, and I started looking for a job, but then I realized that I was, you know, from garment decoration and YouTube, I was making just as much, if not more money hmm. um, with that than I was with the job. So I was like, bye-bye job, you know, YouTube and social media is my, is my new job. So I, I transferred from being a graphic designer and selling t-shirts in high school to just all that information and just 
giving that to the people. And one more thing is that, you know, when I first started way long time ago, there was, you know, there wasn't any internet and a lot of people were very secretive with the information, you know what yeah. I'm saying? So what I wanted to do was make sure that like, that I, I was the person that I wish I had back then. And that's what I try to be. I try to be the person who's giving the information um, that people really want that I wish I had back in the eighties. <laughs> Although things have changed, but that's my story. But isn't that, I mean, um, you know, same thing I said earlier, like it's crazy how one door can close and another one opens, but Absolutely. just kind of even going through that experience, you had the knowledge, you've been doing it for years. You started in high school mm -hmm. um, and then with this platform of YouTube, it kind of just surged. So was um, when you hit that 50,000, 100,000 views on that channel, was that one of the first videos that you had put out? Um, or was that kind of in that, I think I want to do this momentum? It was one of the first videos that I put out. It was a, it was a video on how to do templates, like how okay. to make your t-shirt templates look real. And then I, um, I was actually, I forgot to put this part. Um, I started a screen printing business. Like me and some friends, we got a place and we bought equipment and, you know, we wanted to do screen printing and around, and I hated it. I mean, I hated it. Right. That's why for, for you guys who, who, if you want to do something, make sure before you go full, like make sure that you try it first before you invest and do a, a lot of stuff. So sure. I hated it. And then, it's so funny. I found out about transfers like because we were like we had all this equipment. We were shooting and all the chemicals and spraying mm -hmm. out screens and doing all this stuff. And then I found out you could just like send the art, get them in a couple of days and do them on a heat press. We, and we had a heat press anyway. I was like, you know, A or B. I was like <laughs> B, B all day. And I was I started once I found out about I actually started heat press in I'm sorry, I started T-shirt help desk within a week. And the video that really blew up was a video where I, I showed, it was like a, a, a woody, like a, it was like a beach woody scene. It was like a, a woody truck, you know, like those, um, those surfer woody trucks and a palm tree. Yeah. And um, I printed it and I, I shot it and uh, on a really, really bad camera. <laughs> and it went it went crazy like people i got so many comments and i was like okay this th that was the one that really really blew up was the transfer so this transfers thing is is really changing and, and, and revolutionizing of this industry because all that other stuff you don't need that stuff all you need is a heat press yeah <laughs> Isn't that weird? It, or not weird. It's crazy. It's crazy cool that one piece of equipment can provide you so much opportunity, whether you're making the decoration, you're having that education, the different types of markets that you can cater to. It's it's one of those things where I feel like everything kind of starts to encompass this one giant panini press, right? And I'm going to call yes. it a panini press because <laughs> that's just, just massive, but we all know that it's way more uh, than that. But, you know, as you started your channel, go ahead. Yeah. Uh -huh. No, I was just going to say one more thing about the heat press is that virtually everything that you want to do, if you want to print and garment decorate at home, virtually, even some screen printing, uh, you need a heat press. It's like the quintessential piece of equipment, no matter what you do, you need that heat press, but I'm sorry, you can go ahead. No, that's fine. <laughs> um, I think like, as you started your channel, you mm -hmm. dabbled in, you know, different conversations and focus points on your channel for somebody that is considering starting a YouTube channel, or mm -hmm. maybe, you know, they just have a lot of passion for what they do and they feel that they have a need for education to go out there. And just like you said, provide information and build a community that people would love to have. Mm -hmm. Is there, you know, a good time to pivot your channel? Did you find that, you know, through waves of the world and um, things that would happen in time, say COVID um, or recessions, did you find uh -huh. that your channel also shifted with that mentality and you talked about, you know, different, different topics or... You kept it you. You kept it about here's what I do, here's what I know, and sharing it. 
Um, you know, if we're talking about the, the pandemic and like, actually nothing changed. I, I kept doing it, you know, talking about uh, the same things. And I actually did a video where I did a couple of, of um, designs that were centered around the pandemic, you know, no matter what, if, if when something is happening, if something is trending, nothing more trending than a pandemic, like you can make money with, you know, current events. And actually what's crazy is that since so many, in terms of YouTube, since so many people were home, everybody, and I mean, everybody was consuming content. And my, actually my ad revenue shot through the roof during okay. the first, yeah, during the first few months of the, uh, of the pandemic, it was, it was, I was like, wow. So there's a, I mean, you know, a pandemic is, is terrible, but yep. there's a silver lining, you know, there's always a, a, a silver lining to something. And I did, so I sold some, some, uh, some COVID-19, uh, some, some t-shirts, you know. Oh, from, yep. And that was, I'm assuming from, what an advertisement, not an advertisement, but, you know, being able to talk about it on your channel. Yeah. Well, well, no, cause it's separately because sure. what happened was that, you know, there were t-shirts that said not to, to make light of something, yeah. but just a little bit of levity. There were t-shirts that said, you know, things like I've been, you know, I was social distancing way before the pandemic, you know, stuff, you know, yeah. stuff like that, stuff like that. And people, people liked it. <laughs> yeah. It's, um, it's relatable, right? I mean, yes. it's, I think people yes. always love to find something that's relatable, no matter the timeline, whether it is mm -hmm. in current events that are quite drastic, or if it's just a fun time in your life. Now, yes. when it comes to starting your channel, what equipment did you start with? Because there are so many people that start a channel, right? And then you see that they have ran out and bought all of this equipment because they're going to start a channel and it's going to take off and it's going to go. What do you recommend to get started? Okay. So here's a, when I started my channel, I had a little, it was like a $99 like, this is back when you could buy like camcorders. Uh -huh. It was like one of those little cam when you put a card in it, yep. right? And um, because phone footage is not like it's not like today, sure. um, because phones kind of the, the, the video wasn't that good. And I just use I just use that. But that was back in the you know, that was like 2007, 2008. But um, I'm going to say to everybody, you absolutely do not need to buy any expensive equipment. The thing that you need to do is start. If you have, hold on, where is it? Uh, I was just going to pull up. It's my other phone. If you have a phone, you have, that's all you need. That's all you need is a phone because here's the deal. No matter who you are, and you may think it's great, your first videos are going to suck, right? <laughs> but they're, but they're going to be good to you. And that's the yeah. most important thing. But the most important thing is to be of, of value to be of service to the people and try to give people information that you think would help them or you think that you would like to hear if you, you know what I'm saying I think that that's the most important thing and as time goes on you you'll begin to pick up and learn everything but use your phone another thing that's really important is your sound your sound is actually more important than the video because people can take crappy video. If people hear crappy sound, they'll cut that thing off immediately. So make sure that your sound is good. You, if you want to, you can get a nice, you know, a little mic. Also, there's um, Adobe has an AI enhancement that makes like if your sound is, you know, kind of bad or you're a little distant, it makes it sound like you have the best microphone ever is you just look up I don't, I'm just look up um, hold on I can I have it on my uh, on my computer right here I'm gonna tell you I was like yeah tell the exactly people what tell it them is. what they it's need called, uh, and your internet is kind of going in and out so I'm gonna try to watch for that come back all right I'm back I'm back it's called enhanced speech yeah can you hear me it's called enhanced yep. just do a google search for enhanced speech for adobe just take your video run it through it and it'll sound amazing but sound is is actually more important 
then video. Use your phone and get started. The most important thing is get started and everything else will come. All the SEO stuff, all the video stuff, all the editing, get, get started. You can edit on your phone. You, you don't have to buy software. Every computer, um, I think um, um, Windows Movie Maker is on Windows. You can get that for free and Macs come with uh, what is it? iMovie. So you don't have to buy it. all the stuff is free. You just download it for free and get started. I think that's such a, that get started, right? Those, those two words yes. I think is probably one of the most powerful phrases that somebody could say, because there's, there's to, so many people that could be in their minds or they're over analyzing it. They're checking out angles. Okay. This lighting isn't good. I could have said this differently. But at the end of the day, like you said, the first couple videos you put out, they're not going to win any awards, right? Like they're, you're going to yeah. look back and you're going to go, what in the world? But the point is, the more you do it, the more repetitive you can become, the better you're going to be. And then you can really kind of find your voice in what you want to say by just starting. Same thing yes. with the business. How many times do people contemplate so much and next thing you know, their business has sat for six months because they didn't take the press out of the box. They didn't hit record. They didn't just sit down and work on that design. So just do it. Just start. You know, I think that's that's huge. Just start. And don't have you, you don't have any expectations other than to I want to put out a video that's going to help somebody that's going to. I'm telling you right there, that's going to, and people are going to feel that energy. Just put out, I want to help somebody and make a video that you feel is going to help somebody. And you're going to learn, is it what they say? Jump and the parachute will open or something like that. Like you have to, you have to start and everything else will come in time. But it, the other thing will never work. If you don't start, nothing will come. So we actually had a great question uh, come in. So, Mm -hmm. Oh, excuse me. I'm going to pop it up right here. So for those of you that are listening on the podcast, I'm going to go ahead and read it. It says, Gary, you have a great YouTube channel. I've noticed in this industry, people thirst for information on apparel printing, especially visual instruction. How much post-production is involved in your videos? I noticed there are lots of edits, splices, swipes, et cetera. What is the turnaround time on creating one of your videos? Oh, man, um, who 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 asked that? Could you go like I have my glasses? What was that person's name again? <laughs> it's Vincent, oh, Vincent man. Driscoll. So, he is also in social media, so he understands kind of the world okay. that you and I live in. But I mean, okay. So I will say that as an expert that you are, there's going to be way more levels of of editing than say the newer person. So. How much time did you spend editing when you first started, maybe versus now? Okay, for me, um, actually, it's more now. But here's the here's the deal, right? I, I don't know because I now that I go to trade shows and I meet other people and I see their videos and I see the amount of stuff that they do, I'm flabbergasted because for me, it is a long, and I think it's just me, but it is a very long process only because like you know i'm no spring chicken and like it's all about energy so for me a video is like especially one that's involved there's some videos that where i can just talk those don't take that long yeah. you know and i could edit it or actually sometimes i have an editor put it together if i'm just giving like points and tips those are quick and easy if i'm actually showing how to do something that it is it, for me it's about a two-week process the shooting is about a week and the editing if it's quick it can take about two and a half to three days sometimes four days but this is the deal you can i could sit down and do it but i'll do it and then i'll eat and then i'll go to the gym and i'll come back and i'll do it. so i don't i don't just sit there and do it. But 90% of the videos I actually shoot and edit myself. I have had a videographer with, with things I really want to do. But for the most part, for me, I can only speak for myself, is a, a long process.
process and I've gotten to the point now where I, where I actually write it out. I write a script and I do like a little bit of a storyboard. Yeah. But I don't I don't suggest that for everybody. But I've been doing it so so long that I really try to put out the really kind of the best productions that I can and I'm still, you know, trying to perfect it. But for me, so I'm gonna sit to answer the person's question, it's about I would say working days for a video about five and three. So about eight days, like like four or five days of shooting and about three days of editing, give or take. You know, but a, a lot of people, I see people do a video every day. I don't know how they do it. Yeah. God bless them. I, I don't know how to do it. But for me, it's a it's an involved process to answer the gentleman's question. Yeah. Do you find that? Um, OK, so social media platforms in general, there's there's conversation of mm -hmm. you've got to post every single day. Um, there's conversation of, well, you have to be in stories or you have to post three days a week, um, you know, content is important, kind of right? Broken. We need to make sure it's valuable content. But do you find or did you find that there was a rhythm that worked over others where um, maybe you post once every week or once every two weeks or every other day? Did you find that there was any kind of strategy in that? Oh, we might have lost him. All right, guys, I'm going to see if uh, Gary will be able to pop back in. So I'm going to give it just a couple of minutes. Um, now, I did see Carrie Mitchell. She does have a question um, that said you said that you run ads. What kind of ads did you run and how often? Once he pops back in, I will make sure that we get that question answered. So with you that are tuning in and watching live, Go ahead and pop any of those questions um, in the comments now. That way they can pop up in time before we uh, finish our interview. And hopefully Gary is able to pop back on. But um, for those of you that are curious about Gary and just kind of what he does, um, he doesn't do any uh, consulting, but he definitely has his channel. So if you are curious, you want to follow along, you want to see what he's capable of, definitely follow him on his social channels, which is the uh, t-shirt help desk and definitely look for Gary and Janae. He has several hundred videos. And like you, like he said, there are years of content. And I think it's super important to realize that as he's been doing this over 10 years, you know, his content has changed. It has adjusted. There are some videos where he talks about art. There are some videos where he talks about sublimation and transfers direct to film. All of that really kind of encompasses our apparel um, decoration. So I think Sean has a, a an excellent uh, value added kind of mentality when it comes to content. So he said, jab, jab, punch approach, punch approach. I cannot talk today. Um, and it says, don't only sell in your content, teach people to draw them in by adding value and then make a sales post after a few teaching posts. I think that is extremely, extremely important that it's not always about, uh, selling his back. It's about providing that value and getting those uh, viewers to want just to subscribe to your channel and, of course, stay with you through the process. Gary, are you, are you here? He's frozen again. <laughs> oh, all right. So Danielle Petrosky, um, she is on. Oh, can you hear me, Gary? Can you hear me? Thumbs up, thumbs down. Let's try it one more time, guys. Okay, so Danielle has actually um, typed in LinkedIn, if that's where you're tuning in. If you are on YouTube, hopefully you guys can see this link that I popped up. But uh, Gary's YouTube channel is down below, so you can definitely go there. Just see how he talks to you know, our community, which I think is extremely important. Um, and 
while he is also an apparel decorator, he has also, um, you know, developed this channel to give him another platform um, in the apparel decoration world. So if you are considering starting a YouTube channel, you heard it from Gary himself that you don't need the most expensive equipment. All you need is your phone and you've just got to get started. Um, play with the content that you are going to put out there. I think it's, it's you know, extremely important. And as myself, who is a newer to talking about content and joining the Stolf TV channel, um, you know, you really have to hone in on who you are as a personality, as well as making sure that what you're putting out there, people are, are going to want to listen to. Gary, are you here? I, I am. I, I'm here. I'm so sorry. My <laughs> okay. internet might be a little bit shoddy here at the airport, but I pulled it closer, so I think it. I think it's a, a little bit. It was like one foot away, so I put it like right on top now. So I don't know. So Hopefully I did. I kind of jumped the gun and I went ahead and told people how they can follow you. Um, mm -hmm. You know, definitely going to the TV channel on YouTube. And then they can also just see who you are as an educator, as a person with, you know, like you have a personality, right? Like people want to watch you on that channel. Um, uh -huh. And then just how you really started uh, apparel decoration. And then this entire, I don't want to call it a hustle, but this entire mm -hmm. job um, and role with in YouTube. So mm -hmm. we did have um, a couple of other uh, questions come in okay. and I want to go ahead and ask those to you. Okay. Um, Carrie Mitchell said, you said that you run ads. What kind of ads did you run and how often? Oh, so when I talked about, when I talked about ad revenue, that was from my YouTube channel. So that were people running ads with Google that, that we get paid from. <coughs> now I have run ads, <coughs> pardon me. All type of things going on today. Now I have <laughs> I ha I have run ads. Um, I have run um, not Google ads, but Facebook ads back in the day. And usually, I would run them for small amounts of money just to see if the T-shirts caught on. And um, if not, I would run them for like about three or four days, maybe put about twenty dollars a day just to see. And you'll know, you know, from sales and from interaction. And then I was, if whatever people liked or if it sold or converted, then I would, uh, you know, double, triple down, scale up. That's, that's really a great breakdown on, on terms of ads, right? Because when we hear ads, I think sometimes we think of those like the ads that you're running. But one thing about YouTube is wow. YouTube actually puts ads in content. So not only are you um, capitalizing on subscribers and views, you also get to capitalize on ads that are in your content. Yeah. And also yeah. to, to the person who, who asked that I did something recently where I have a, cause I, 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 I sell uh, t-shirts in certain niches. So I have, a, um, I know a person who's in, the niche and he has a, a nice following so i sent him some t-shirts right and it went crazy sales were crazy so the point i'm trying to make here is is that influencer marketing i would say do that first meaning find a person whatever your niche is find a person who has a following and even if they ask to give them some money it's cheaper than the advertising find a person that is um in your niche send them some teas and let them talk about it. It makes a world of difference. And it's to me a lot better uh, than, than running ads, a lot better. That's an incredible tip because I think sometimes, um, you know, as say Facebook or Instagram or even TikTok start to push more and more sponsor posts or sponsored ads, um, you know, that's where people kind of automatically go to in terms of, okay, well, if I want something to take off, then I have to, I have to push the, an ad. But you just gave an incredible tip mm -hmm. about, you know, connecting and collaborating with an influencer that you relate to or is in the niche. And then it becomes more yes. of a collaboration versus analytical analytics behind the scenes. Um, so I want to ask this exactly. question. 
How do you feel about mm -hmm. apparel YouTube channels that put out videos trying to show people how to start a clothing line with little to no startup money? Um, okay. I, I've heard of that before, but here's the, here's the thing. I don't watch a lot of, uh, because I do this all the time, I don't watch a lot of other people's stuff, and that's not from, like, hating. It's just that, yeah. uh, you know, it's like a chef watching, you know, Cooking but um, I will say this. <sighs> yeah, exactly. I will say this. If you can get some benefit from it, yes. But the only way that I know of a person can start a, a, a t-shirt line with a little to no me would be print on demand and building up a social media. I don't know. And if they know, please listen to them. But print on demand is a very low, little to no cost. And um, having a social media following, building that up, you can organically do that. But other than that, I don't, you know. And, and please send me some links. I don't, I don't know any other. I don't know any other way. That's the, uh, that's the, that's the way that. Oh, I know. you kind of cut out on the last one. Social media. Um, what did you say? It's a. Uh, oh, I said print on demand. Social media, organic social media. Organic social media. Yep. So, um, you know, with. Yeah, yeah. The little to no startup money, I think, is always a tricky conversation because what somebody considers expensive is always different to the next person. It's never going to be on the same Absolutely. playing field of how much is really too much or how much is not enough. And mm -hmm. I think the biggest thing is what do you need, right, in order to get your business started? If you need four different pieces of equipment, that's going to cost more money. If you need one piece of equipment and you can pay $29 a month on Shopify to have an e-commerce business or use spirit sale that stalls offers, that's going to do everything that you need. All you need is the transfer. You need the press and then some type of platform to help you get those products wherever they need to go. Yes. Yes. Now yeah, um, it's all about. Go ahead. No, no, I was just going to say, it's all about once you actually get the product, wherever you get the product from, whether you print it at home or print on the main, you, you need to get eyeball. people seeing that product. That's all the difference. So is there any, um, so to kind of wrap up, is there anything in terms of tips that you would give somebody besides just starting? Because I think that is one of the most valuable pieces of information. Um, you know, if they're thinking about mm -hmm. it, what what's something you would tell yourself? Oh no! Did you hear me? <laughs> still there? Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, no. What's something? Say that again. What's the? Yeah. I got to the part. Oh, what's what, something? What's something you would tell yourself? Ten years ago. So, what would Gary now tell Gary ten years ago? Wow. Okay. That's a good one. I would say that here's the deal. Just because you do a video on something once doesn't mean it's over. You will do the same, a new version of the same video 10, 20 times. Keep doing because this industry is really about three, four, five things. And you could do that over and over again because the videos, they have a shelf life. They go up, hopefully, and then they level off and then they die as all the videos come along. So do another version of the same video time and time again. And, you know, everyone is different. Figure out your monetization strategy. Not don't just use um, don't just use YouTube ads. That's great. That's great. Extra money. But figure out what is it going to be? If you're a decorator, you can sell artwork. You can um, you can be a consultant. You can um, you could do something to whereas you can use your skills and you can if you don't want to do that that's fine but you know have a monetization outside of uh, outside of um, YouTube have a monetization strategy in place the day you put up your first video. I mean, you've been a, a, a wealth of knowledge. I think that the tips that you've given, you know, our community is like, do you want to write a book, Gary? Because I feel like, <laughs> <you could. laughs> I mean, 
it's just it's I, you so, know i have i i have a book i have a book you, it's called there you go. Yeah, yeah 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 and i'm and i'm doing is is i'm doing uh, a new version of it that'll be out soon it's called start a t-shirt business or die trying uh you can get on my website but the new version i say wait till the new version comes out it'll be on amazon what is your <laughs> website t-shirthelpdesk.com perfect I mean, just the, the information and, and tips or just value that you've, I feel like, given to our community isn't just like, hey, make sure you're commenting on your videos or make sure you post twice, you know, in one week. It's, it's not that. It's, it's really the other details that go into that about the conversation. Reuse that content that you just, you know, released and then do it again mm-hmm. um, and then just do start, right? Just yes. start. I think those are all, uh, you know, incredible. And I do have to tell you before we leave, um, because I think this is pretty cool. Where did it go? Um, okay. So Hayden Richards says, I learned my this business from Gary way back in 2011 to 2013 when I was starting. Thank you, Gary. So I saw that comment You're pop welcome. up and... <laughs> Um, sometimes in, in our world of, you know, education, it's just nice to know that what you went through and what your experiences helped another person. So I thought that was pretty, pretty cool to see. So Gary, thank you so much. Um, really quick, tell our viewers and our listeners, um, where they can follow you and how they can stay in touch. Okay. So you can follow me. Number one is my YouTube channel. Just go to YouTube. You put in T-shirt help desk, you'll see the chair, right, the logo, and click there um, on all other social. Well, I'm pretty much on Instagram and TikTok, T-shirt help desk. And if you want to um, write me, just Gary at T-shirt help desk dot com. And if you want a, I don't do them very often, but if you want a consultation, you can go to Clarity dot FM and just put in Gary Ajene or T-shirt help desk, and I'll pop up. Perfect. Thank you so much for your time. I I truly appreciate it. And um, I know you are going to be catching a flight soon. So safe travels. But Gary, thank you so much. And guys, happy decorating. Thank you.